Okay, with three uh, communications to the board. First one from the Southampton Little League. The Southampton Little League would like to use the Downs Family Park fields for their 2017, or well, should be 2018 season. Uh, from April 1st through July 31st, this will cover regular season and tournament play. I mentioned last year about extending our use to the end of September to allow coaches to practice with their athletes for a longer period of time. So after July 31st through September 30th, would be the addition, additional use of the field for 18. This would be for practice only, no games, league, etc. Strictly developmental for our Southampton League registrants. There's some certificate insurance and calendar, calendar of events. Um, once again, thank you to the Southampton Village and Parks Department for all the hard work that goes into maintaining all the parks, etc. Sincerely, President John Venturella. Standard operating procedure every year with us. So yeah. And John does a great job with the little league program. Yes. So I just need a motion to to approve the use of the field. So moved. Second. Second. In favor. Uh -huh. <laughs> Second was from the Rogers Memorial Library. Uh, dear Mayor, every members of the board, I'm writing you today to seek permission to install a little free library at Cooper's Beach. Last spring you permitted us to put one in Agawam Park and it's been a great success. The structure and all the books we put in the library are funded by the Friends of the Rogers Memorial Library and librarians maintain the stock of books. The second little free library would work the same way and we thought Cooper's Beach would be another fantastic location. And closing our copy of an article about the Agron Park location from 27 East. Many thanks for taking the time to consider our request to see Liz Burns, library director. That's a great idea. It's very popular. You can grab their book and get on their bike. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> she's, she's actually, uh, <laughs> we've had conversations with her about extending the one in Agron Park. Yeah. Okay, good. No, it was the Agron Park one was yeah, well received. Actually, I thought they had one in uh, Cooper's Beach. But I guess no, they what they did, they did the pop-up library. Oh, they do okay. that twice, That's a, right. twice a, a year at the beach. Okay. <clears throat> this was the thing they had at Iowa. I so okay. I'll, I'll make Gee, that motion. You might actually read over the summer. <laughs> yeah, now, as they really go to the beach. Second. Second. All in favor? All right. All right. Next one is just a letter from Gubbin Sports. We, the business owners located on Hill Street in the village of Southampton, would like to voice our objection to the use of parking spaces on the north and south side of Hill Street during the hours of 9 a.m. through 6 p.m. by Hometown Taxi Company. The vehicles of Hometown Taxi occupy many of the spaces located in front of our business and disrupt the ability of our customers to find parking. Their vehicles are in violation of the village code, which imposes parking restrictions on Hill Street to two hours. We respectively ask you to enforce the village code on parking restrictions and work with the hometown taxi company to find space outside of the business district for them to park their fleet of vehicles. Signed by Govan Sports, p g Auto Parts, Revolve Hair, UPS, Charles Schwab, and Sandy oh, Rodis? Soma. Yeah. Soma. Soma. Soma? Okay. Yeah, I would So you, don't, you go there. Uh, in, in their defense, the uh, hometown taxi has, within the last month or so, started to... Uh, Park right there. I, I don't know why, whether or not they have a pickup or something. Uh, they're parking there and, and across the street in that uh, where the exercise place used to be. Uh, so we can, I guess, reach out to Chief Cummings. Yeah, he's away, but I'll, I'll talk to him. When he gets back. Yeah, they yeah. just keep finding a new, I mean, basically, they're just being shuffled around the village room. We, we, we get them out of one spot, and they just they, keep they just finding find, another right. one. They're unbelievable, yeah, they're, they're pretty good at it. <coughs> you know, behind the movie theater, they did all that signage over there. I'm sorry? We did put all that signage in on Hill Street for the two-hour parking, so we're just going to force it. Okay. Yeah. Okay. That's what they didn't have signage before. I can make a suggestion. Uh, uh, well, if, if they have a need to, to park the vehicles, is it possible to maybe put aside a certain area for them and maybe charge them for it? And, you know, so that they have a specific place, we know where they are, and they don't infringe on the public parking. Yeah, so but parking is tough. Anyway, hey, give us a suggestion. <laughs> yeah, it's a good point because the guy, obviously you got to go somewhere. But. but apparently the owner of one of the other taxi companies, I don't know if it's Southampton Taxi, they have their own lot and they have it outside the village and they all park there. So we don't see all the other taxi companies. 
so behind the movie theater this time of year? Well, we had it, that's a private, private lot. They could charge them to park it up. We had they an had issue it. with that. They parked back there and they were thrown out of there too. Right. So it's, you know, it's one of those things. And I think that's the right, best is, is the enforcement and we'll get them to. All right, moving on to resolutions. Item one, resolve that the reading of the minutes for the public session two of March 20th, 2018 be dispensed with. And if those minutes be accepted as filed by the village administrator, the actions taken that meeting be and hereby are ratified and approved. Have a motion? So moved. Second. Second. In favor? Aye. Aye. Item two, resolve the claims for the warrants dated April 12, 2018, totaling $441,594.24, warrant 17 general fund, $1,843.88 and $3,897.57, warrants 19 and 11, trust fund, and $10,000, warrant 11, capital reserve fund, and the village payrolls for the period from March 16th to April 12th be ordered and approved. Got a motion? Make a motion. Second. Discussion, page one, Alpine Software, Fire Department Software, 3,775, Ron Well House of Tires, 10,500 tires for the brush truck. Page two, William Bates, Medicare Reimbursement, 1,285.80, Black Bear Lubricants, Bulk Oil for the Garage, 2,275.40, Blue Tarp Financial, Garage Shelter, 5,204.88, Braun Marketing, the Spring Newsletter, 4,775.98. Page three, Buzz Chu Chevrolet, parts for the garage, 2001-1068, cast productions, March video, uh, videography services, $2,060. Page four, John Cole and Joyce Cole, Medicare reimbursements, reimbursements, 1,285.80, Commission of Taxation and Finance, uh, first quarter MTA tax, 11,982.37, CSEA, medical insurance for, the, for uh, April, 288,468 44 Nancy and Rick DePetris, Medicare reimbursements, one thousand forty-four ninety. Page five, David Spellman, uh, legal fees for the Rosewood litigation of four seventy-two First Neck Lane, five thousand eight twenty-seven fifty. Down the bottom of the page, EMT Government Accounting Services. Going out to the next page, Accounting Services in March, one thousand two hundred dollars. ESO Solutions Ambulance Software Subscription, three thousand three fifty-eight forty. Farrell Fritz uh, Scar Payments, ninety thousand three forty-six ninety-four. Finance manager processing W-2s and 1095Cs for 2017 calendar year, 3,335.75. Fire manager supply, fire truck repair, 1,547.68. First Presbyterian church lease um, for April, $3,000. Blue imagery, um, computer consulting work for the PD, 3,086.69. Fundamental business services for collection fees for February, 1,149. Page eight, Goals LLC police uniforms, 1,523.41. Global Montello, 3,000 gallons of diesel fuel, 6,243.60. Wayne Gordon, ambulance medical reimbursement, $1,000. Granger, highway and park supplies, 1,025.13. Page nine, Herrick Hardware, building maintenance supplies, 1,063.59. Impact interface with Suffolk County Police Department for PD. 5,100, industrial hearing, testing for the DPW department, 1,055, Johnson Electrical Construction, traffic signal maintenance for March, 1,400, uh, Clifford Johnson, medical reimbursement, 1,044.90, Johnson Supply, a, a mini split for the garage office, 1,051.28, Brady Krasinski, Medicare reimbursement, 1,044.90, page 11, Lairdia Medical, ambulance uh, testing, Ambulance training, rather, $16,428.53. We've also received a $9,000 donation to offset this, this expense. Mm -hmm. Long Island East Printing, Fire Department Printing, 1,430. Page 12, windshield repair to Malvisi equipment on the payloader, 2001-1607. Messiano Consulting Services through March for granting writing, $6,442.50. Page 13, more medical uh, corporation, ambulance, medical supplies, 3,334.33. Mm. Morgan Auto Supply, garage supply parts, 2,456.80. Patricia Munn, Medicare reimbursement, 1,285.80. Nassau Diagnostics, Fire Department Physicals, 8,830. National Grid Bills for March, 3,657.57. Nelson Polk and Bores, Consulting Services for the Planning Board and Zoning, 2,505.67. Page 14, Norsic and Sun carding fees for um, March 4th, 8,287. New York State unemployment, first quarter payment 6,424. Office to take controller. Uh, collection fees for the court uh, 8,607. Optimum um, 
phone bills through uh, March 2092.61 through 16 PSE and G for March 19,184.31. 17, Guy Tree Reynolds, a court stenographer, 1,250. Robinson and Robinson, ARB and Planning Board legal fees through November 40, November 41,418. Ronco Cleaning Supplies, 2,181. Page 18, Shoreline Towing, for PD, 2,100. Southampton Tire, price for the garage, um, 1,199. Sprague Operating Reserve, 5,991 gallons of gasoline, 11,252.66. Page 19, Suffolk Cement, precast, highway supplies, 1,244. Press newspaper fees, advertising fees for March, 1,093.64. Anthony Tohill, legal fees through March, 2,800. Town of Southampton, dumping fees, 1,047.85. Truck King International, dump uh, fuel pump repair, 1,144.67. Vehicle Tracking Solutions, GPS charges for March 1,151.52. Uh, Verizon for March 3,711.72 and Verizon Wireless 2,032.67. Uh, Vermeer Garage with Parts 1,876.38. VHB, VHB Engineering Surveying, Engineering for the Avalon Septic System 1,004.05. And WB Mason Office Supplies 1,407.72. And Wines Medicare Reimbursement 1,045.80. Next warrant is a trust warrant, Nelson and Pope, uh, 108388. This is for the cell tower work they've been doing, and this is paid out of an escrow account that was provided by Hempel. It's not an expense of the village. Mm -hmm. And the next uh, warrant is the trust warrant, Johnston Supply, HVAC for the new restaurants, restrooms at Agron Park, 1978-24. And the capital reserve warrant, and Jeffrey T. Butler, uh, architect for the um, ambulance warrant, $10,000. For the discussion, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Question one. Sure. It, it goes back. I think it's page. I don't know six slash twenty two. And mm -hmm. Carol Fritz ninety thousand dollars three hundred. That's for um, the challenging the taxes, scar settlements, certiorari. Okay. Bill McCoy has been you know, working with them and negotiating. It's a settlement that came out. <clears throat> Item three, resolve that the Board of Trustees hereby approves this TEF scheduled budget transfers to eliminate overage for the period March 21st through April 12th, 2018. Have a motion? Make the motion. Second. Second. Discussion. Our first one is 20,000 out of trustee special projects with 12,000 into mayor's assistant and 8,000 into justice court contractual. Next one is 4,000 out of buildings contractual into fuel oil. Next one is 5,000 out of garage contractual going into garage equipment. Next one is 55,000 out of workers' comp, 5,000 out of police part time, with 10,000 going into police overtime, 10,000 to police contra uh, contractual, and 40,000 to radio operators overtime. Next one is 10,000 out of fire equipment into utilities. Next one is $500 out of building inspector contractual into building inspector refund. Next one is 10,000 out of street maintenance supplies going to street maintenance contractual. Next one is 3,400 out of Cooper's overtime with 1,000 going into Cooper's Beach contractual and 2,400 into equipment. And the last one is 10,000 out of Parks Seasonal, 6,000 going into Parks Contractual, 2,000 into Parks Miscellaneous, and 2,000 into Parks Utilities. All in favor? Aye. 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 Item four, resolve that the Board of Trustees approve the hiring of Joseph Prokop. 170 mm -hmm. Esquire, 175 Route 25A, East of Talk, mm -hmm. New York, to represent the village at the village general election on Friday, June 15th, 2018, from 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. at the Levitt Law Center, Pond Lane, Southampton, at the rate of $200 per hour. Have a motion? Make a motion. Second. Second. Uh, discussion just to make a note that $200 an hour is not for the 12 hour period, it's only as needed if needed. We'll call it in. All in favor? Aye. 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 Item five, resolved that the Board of Trustee hereby approves the Southampton Village Volunteer Ambulance 2017 Length of Service Award Program List, which has been reviewed and certified by Dan Berry, Chief. Have a motion? So moved. Second. 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 All in favor? Aye. Aye. I want to see you say this name now. Oh, it's really, <laughs> I got it down pat. See? Resolved that the Board of Trustees hereby approves the hiring of Josie T-Z-I-T-Z-I-N-I-T-I-T-L-A <laughs> As a summer tax assistant for the tax receiver at the rate of $17 an hour for the period June 1st through July 13th. Uh, I'll make that Go ahead, Julie. Say it. Go ahead. How do you say it? Tizamitla. I have no idea. There you go. Tizamitla. Second? Second, yeah. All in favor of you, say it. 
Seven, resolved that the Board of Trustees hereby approves the hiring of Jagger, M-A-D-D-O-C-K, <laughs> as a grasshopper for the Parks Department at an hourly rate of $11, effective June 1st, 2018. Got a motion? I make the motion. Second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. And the last one resolved, the Board of Trustees hereby approves the hiring of Dawn Lucioni as a paramedic. <laughs> for, was it Lucioni, Rich, or Lucioni? Lucioni, Lucioni, you know, they made a model, Italian, you know. Yeah. As a paramedic for the SVVA Inc. at an hourly rate of $25. Got a motion? So moved. Second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, a couple of discussion items. The first one is a Master Creek to Bike Club Club run on Sunday, September 23rd, 2018. Approximately from six to six. Um, annual event, roughly 700 participants. What's it up to now? 700? 700. Yeah. They do this every year. Yeah, no, yeah. I just I don't ever really recall what the actual headcount was. They go throughout the entire town, now, don't mm -hmm. they? Yeah, yeah it's different. And they only uh, are in the village in for a short little run, right? Yes. Right. Yeah, no, it's... Mm -hmm. And again, it's just really a formality because it's, it's, it's yeah. Uh, I, I've moved that we accept. I second that. All in favor? Aye. 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 Um, item two, just uh, to make the public aware, the, the uh, ad for the surf school has been running the last two weeks. The, the bids are due at 2 o'clock on uh, May 3rd, which yeah. is a Thursday. Yep. So um, that's in place. Uh, third item is, is just the uh, the Pierce concert bids. Um, we did go out to bid in the fall. The bids were way over budget, and we cut down the scope of the work, and we went out to a rebid, which we just opened up on April 5th. Uh, the bids are with Paul Rogers for review to make sure they're intact. They just want to give you the results. The first one was from Yankee Construction, 826370 Carter Lens, $626,000. WGP Contracting, but there was a question about the Wix little envelope, 437600 And LaDuca Associates, 999979 And our budget was? 500000 Okay, uh, another walk, not another one, it's actually a, another ride on the Suffolk Bicycle Riders Association on Sunday, June 3rd, um, 6 a.m. to 5 p.m., 800 to 1,000 participants. 800 to 1,000? Mm -hmm. this, um, this is the one that they had to change <clears throat> the route because of the U.S. Open. Right. Well, okay. and so they've, they've done it every year, but it never goes through the village, but because of the U.S. Open, the town, it had to be switched, so it's now coming through the village, and they have asked for police assistance. Where does it come through the village? Uh, it comes through... David White. Mm -hmm. David White. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Prospect. Yeah. Tim. David White's to Maybe Powell, to North Main. Prospect. Moses. North Sea Road. I guess you're not going out that day, am I? And yeah. this is before the open starts? Mm -hmm. so this is Sunday. 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 Yeah, yeah, so it's it's the week before, but because they're already going to have right, all the stuff done. everything set up, they won't let their, their they, detour They traffic through. control requests, There's which they're pay, obviously we're building they and they're paying. For. Okay. And that's a Saturday that's going through David White's. Sunday. It's a Sunday. Oh, Sunday. 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 Uh, yeah, Hill Street, yeah. Somerset, indeed. Yeah, it's pretty much banging through the village. North Main. Mm -hmm. it's the first and again, weekend. it goes on though during for the entire day, so people will be. It's not a race. Yeah, it's staggered. So about. Yeah. people. You don't have a thread. thousand people. Yeah, they're not all going to be coming through it. But the roads are all closed. Yeah. But cars can't drive aside. No, they're not oh, no, closed. Yeah, they're they're it's over an eleven hour period. Yeah, yeah. they're all open. Yeah. Okay. It's just the TCOs will be positioned in Do we notify all these people in the neighborhoods? Because, I mean, I'm sure that I'm just Somerset just we jumps out at me. Have we have in the Have we or we haven't? I think we usually done that when the roads have been closed. When the roads yeah. were being closed, like around Pheasant closed. and so forth, there was some there. I just think that we need through. to put something in the paper saying that on that such and such Well, the good thing about these, they're, they're really staggered out. It's yeah. not yeah, but like I, a, I mean, all of a sudden they're going to see all these bicycles, not all at once, but, you know, coming through. Yep. You know. Well, we should probably uh, write. I, I would, yeah. I, I would put in an ad in or something yeah. because somebody's going to be backing out a driveway. Yeah. You know, most Prospect Street and stuff are all single 
driveways yeah, right. to get it back in, yeah. back out. They're covering the home. Yeah, I think we'll have to work on that. We'll okay. Out how to do that? Um, just my thinking. How many? Can you request only one or two TCOs? Yeah. Okay. What do you think? Steve, am I correct in that, in, as far as the number of TCOs, that the chief would review this? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's all goes through him. Okay. They may say one to two, but... Yeah, yeah. Maybe Based on what Of course, whatever, yeah. whatever, if it ends up more, they're mm -hmm. picking up the tab for it. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right, get your bike ready. Yeah. Get your bike. <laughs> Just join <laughs> it, you know. <laughs> bike. Huh? You can rent the bike. Yeah, the bike. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll get this going. Get your rental bike, yeah. yeah the, uh, <laughs> the pedal chair. With my basket on it. Put the nothing on there. Um and where has it always been before? Outside is never it's went through always the been, it's never gone through the village, it's always been through the town and I don't know if they oh, like it's just really it's a one shot right? deal because, yeah, yeah. because I'm just curious though, is yeah. that they, 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 they stay thirty nine. Yeah. 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 Steve, you may not know this off the top of your head, but how many net new events like this are going through the village? This is the only one. This is the only one. We've restricted okay. everything yeah, we to have. what's ever grandfathered. That stays no, the same. Know. We're not we're not accepting any of them. We just got. We haven't had a net. Well, I mean, it's, it's, it's only because we one shot. Yeah. No, no, no. This one, no. <laughs> net new. Okay. The problem is with the riders. It's you know, yeah. And, and road. Yeah. You know. And at the end of the day, it's a public yeah. road. We can't. You can't say no. Yeah. But if we're going to provide things for them, TCO traffic and such, then yes, we. Well, then they pay for it. Yeah. That's where we step it. in. Uh, I'd make it. Somerset is definitely public, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Right, Gary? Somerset. Okay. I'd make a motion to accept the Suffolk Bicycle Riders Association application uh, with the understanding that we run an <coughs> ad so that those areas know that bikes are coming through. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. The last one is Our Lady of the Hamptons <laughs> Walk Run on Saturday, 11-3. It's 9 to 10.30. <clears throat> it's November, though. Correct. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> this is <clears throat> now, I believe this is new. Is it? This is new? Yeah. Oh, I see, a net new. Okay. Mm -hmm. this this is is correct. New. We got a net new. Oh. Oh. Um, this is what? <laughs> what are they doing? November 3rd. Saturday. So yeah, we've been going on. We've done with all our stuff by then. And Mm -hmm. It's for a good cause. It's after Halloween, mm -hmm. so it's after the regular yep. parade. Oh, yeah, it's a fundraiser. They haven't done it before, so they're not sure of the exact number, but it's their first trying, trying it. Not sure Starting at the school? Is that mm -hmm. what it is? Oh, yeah. yeah. Starting at the school. Then over to Elm, okay. Mm -hmm. Elm, little please. Good, I can see everybody run by my house. There you go. Or you could join us. That's right. <laughs> Get a little exercise. Money. Right. You can jump on this, you can jump on a bike run. Right. But they, they aren't going through the village proper, so it's Main Street Dan, it's really North Main. Oh, they're not going to Main Street. Elm, down Little Plains, all the way to the end, yeah. I guess, of Little Plains. Is that Gin Lane it's going to cross? And then so down Main Street. South Main and Main. South and South and South mm -hmm. Main and Main. Yeah. yeah, it is going down to Gin, because look at where Toilson is. Yeah, but it's yeah. coming up South Main and Main. It's and Main Street is part of its own um, Saturday. Up to Main Street. We don't, we don't, we've never had any runners or bikes. Runners certainly yeah. use Main Street. No. Yeah. Never. That I can, yeah. that new, that whatever on that. Maybe like shift it west. I, I think mean, we east. have to take a look at that. Yeah. Change the route? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, the route is, well, we don't set people. You know, the difficulty, even though it's in Great. November, you have a lot of retail operations on Main right. Street. And the okay. disruption is. Yeah, you can't. This okay. is a, okay. oh, we have plenty of time. There's plenty of time to change up. it. Well, we can't um, <laughs> yeah. monitor people running. Good okay. cause. 
Didn't yeah, cause great idea, but... New route. New route. New route. Okay. Okay. New route. okay. okay. <laughs> All right, and the uh, last one is the uh, gin lane. This one is restoration. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening, Melissa Dedovich, Peconic Environmental Associates. Uh, we're, I'm here with Ed Hollander, Landscape Design, as well as, well as um, Village Resident Scott Lindsay. We're here to offer an alternative plan for the restoration of the wetlands along Gin Lane. Um, how this came about was a couple of years ago, I think the village had its own plan that they were proposing. Um, uh, um, many of the, of the people, of the neighbors that are around the pond were concerned <laughs> about the plan. I actually hired myself and hired Ed Hollander to come up with an alternative plan, which we actually think is superior from the original one, and which the, um, the neighbors are also willing to help with the cost of the additional um, installation and maintenance involved with it. Uh, the difference with this alternative plan, I know it's late so I'll be very quick, is that in, we're going to propose the cutting of the Phragmites and Japanese knotweed. Uh, we're proposing wicking the knotweed. To, uh, the original plan involved the spraying of the Phragmites and the Japanese knotweed, which would be a hazard to Lake Agwam, so ours is much more viable, um, ecologically sensitive. Uh, we're also using silt fence along the shoreline to prevent any runoff into Lake Agwam during the installation. We're not proposing any regrading. The original plan had involved creating a swale and actually digging up a large section along uh, Gin Lane to prevent any, um, actually to prevent to make a swale that would run off into the pond. We feel that the increased um, vegeta new vegetation, uh, the new buffer vegetation would actually provide enough of a natural filter system that a net use of a swale wouldn't be unnecessary at this point. Uh, let me see, we also are installing 316 native shrubs of significant scale, the three gallons or greater, 21 native, tre uh, native trees with heights ranging from five feet up to 10 feet, um, a large swath of native perennials and grasses um, that are going to be installed in sick court and up, not the plugs that were originally proposed as part of the original plan. What we feel this uh, results in is a natural, viable wetlands buffer of varying heights, which provides habitat and foodstuff for native wildlife, as well as a natural filtration system for the lake. I have a little bit of a cold, so excuse me, I'm on 10 tons of medication right now. <laughs> also, um, the original plan was calling for, did not call for irrigation. Uh, what we're proposing is actually, um, one of the clients, in fact, there's actually a letter in the file, Charlie Ayers, who was one of the three property owners who actually donated the conservation easement to this lot, he's willing uh, to pay a cost, actually donate the water for the irrigation that would be necessary for the correct establishment of the wetlands buffer. And, um, Per Mr. Uh, Bruin's request, we've provided cost estimates from Summerhill Landscape for the installation of both the original plan, our plan, and also the annual maintenance of it. The original plan, uh, and I also spoke with Chig Voorhees, included the maintenance of the, frag of the keeping the Phragmites and the Japanese knotweed down for a period of th three years, which included spraying for three years. What we're offering, we're going to still also do three years, but at a different method. And we're here to answer any questions. Oh, also in the, um, I believe today we submitted uh, four letters of support from Mr. Lindsay, Mr. Jifra, Mr. Ayers, as well as from J.D. Singh, and, um, the Southampton Association that supports this plan also. First, I'd, I'd like to start by thanking Mr. Lindsay for all his efforts on, on this. It's, it's been you know, great to see you you so active in the community and, and giving so much and, and all you guys along Aguam from uh, the Jifras and so forth. Um, and I think that uh, certainly that area needs to, to obviously be addressed. And those Phragmites, uh, I know a lot of different communities are, are uh, taking a very proactive stance now in Phragmites, which I haven't for a number of years. The DEC used to chase us away from those things, you know, and now they're, they're realizing that how much of an impact they have on the, on the water system. Um, 
Maybe you could explain, that because the financing part's going to be key to this board here, maybe you could explain, because we were going to do a, a joint uh, effort on it, and we were going to deduct the amount that we were going to previously, as I remember before. So, And that's what the estimates are. If you look at the estimates that are there, um, we, we're comparing apples to apples. So the original estimate, we asked Summerhill to quote how much it would cost. Now this is, just so you know, the two estimates do not involve the Phragmites removal. It's really just the prep and the planting work. So the proposal provided by Summerhill for the Nelson Pope and Voorhees plan from 2016 was $77,499. Okay, so that was this one. Okay. Right. The second quote, which is the uh, Ed Hollander design of 2-27-2018, as I said in my presentation, we've really upped the number of shrubs, perennials, and we're also putting in some uh, some other things to prevent runoff into the pond, and that's going to be $142.88. <laughs> like I said, $142. I know it's a bargain. It's a bargain. You got it. Thank you. We're known for our low cost design work. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and then the last one is the estimate, um, which actually Mr. Voorhees also asked for, just how much it would cost for the maintenance of this for the three years. And again, it, it pretty much calls out the procedure, and that's about $24,075. Okay. Per year. Mm -hmm. Annual. Yeah. $24,075, because you actually have to have a special herbicide or um, herbicide license to be able to apply it and everything, and it has to be done by somebody who's actually licensed to do that work. Yeah, you did. And who's doing that? If Summerhill would actually do it. They have and a license. Perpetuity? Oh, no, for three years. With the agreement, with the original plan, what you want to do is actually try to beat down, frankly, the invasives to give the natives a chance to reestablish. So we're hoping that the three years of cutting down the Phragmites and the Japanese knotweed, wicking the knotweed, because that stuff is just a pain in the neck. I mean, even a little bit can start on its own. By doing this and giving a three-year head start, then both the plants that we've planted should have enough time to establish and take off, as well as any natives that are in it that have been hit, kept down by the Phragmites and Japanese knotweed in the area. Didn't somebody just come in not too long ago was saying that now the Phragmite needs to stay there? Some water person? You know what? It's funny. If when we've been forever now, and ever gold, yeah. It's, it's actually, no, we've actually been hearing, and it's so funny. There, there was a recent uh, article, I'm not going to get, because Chick Voorhees and I have talked about this, saying that since you can't beat them, join them, that, you know, they're, I mean, it's, it's Phragmites, is Australia. It's not native. No, we know that. We've, had, we've right. always been on Gary Gillespie. We've been on that understanding for the longest time. Mm -hmm. the until, we wanted to do, until we wanted to do something there. <laughs> and then somebody found a specialist to come up and say, no, it's got to stay. No, and now it's been you're losing your natives. You're, lo you're losing all. I mean, turned again. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So it's pretty respectful. Oh. Oh. Question on that. I don't know. If you can hear me from here. No, 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 you're no. Not the the other part. Part. All, all we're really doing important. is asking permission to continue this over so we can pre present this to Zoning Board of Appeals mm -hmm. for the wetland special permit. Right. Still have other stuff. I'll just ask you a quick question. Okay. Oh, Gary Gillespie, <laughs> Superintendent of Public Works. Uh, in your comment you just made now, if you're going to go in there and do the cutting and the wicking, are you now saying you're going to do that for a three-year program before you plant anything? No. So you're going to be doing that alongside the existing planting? The, the way we would start this is we would, because these things need to happen at certain times of the year, the Phragmites, you get the most effectiveness in cutting the Phragmites when they're actively growing. Cutting them this time of year wouldn't really have any impact on them. Um, so what we're planning on doing is to get the buffer established as soon as we can and get that installed so that it's doing the benefits of what the buffer can do. Establishing the native trees, the native shrubs, getting this growing in there. Then during, at the appropriate time during the season, we would come in by hand and cut the Phragmites and remove the debris which is included in the Summer Hill proposal. And then on the Japanese knotweed, you need to have enough foliar matter. You need to have enough foliage so when they, in effect, they use a painter's mitt that's covered in glycophosphate that they then rub on the foliage. So there's no spray going into the wetlands. That then gets translocated through the plant down to the roots. So you have to allow that to grow to the point where there's enough foliage so that it can actually absorb the herbicide into the plant 
for it to die. So it's kind of a, it's a combination. The, the plan of what we're proposing to do is to get the buffer plantings in immediately so that they have the benefit of filtering any runoff before it gets into Lake Agawam, and then address both the Phragmites and the Japanese knotweed at the ecologically appropriate time to get the most effective control that we can. Mm -hmm. Excuse and me we're for actually a working out the timing with Shigorhi. So, mm -hmm. so he, he wanted us to get the maintenance. So that's something he would write as part of the condition of the approval. Right, right. because part of the concern of this board is, is that um, it's somewhat of a wasted effort to try to, to kill those uh, Phragmites or reduce them or eradicate them or whatever what you want to call. So it, it's important that we understand how you're going to get rid of the Phragmites and the knotweed. Well, no, so wait, so let me just ask yeah. one thing first because I'm still... Well, I'm confused as to when Gary Gillespie and his crew went in to do what you're proposing and a person stood in front of our machinery preventing them from proceeding with what you're proposing to do. Correct me if I'm wrong. Well, so why now is it okay to do? Yes and no. We, we actually did you not propose to clear cut the whole area. We were uh, basically cutting about a 10 foot wide swath right. so that we could then take topsoil. Well, let me back up. What are we going to do in phases? What they're for, for, for many years, about every three to five years, we would go in there with a flail mower, which is a large mm -hmm. chain mower, and when it's flailing, stuff's flying everywhere. It's very mm -hmm. noticeable very dramatic. Mm -hmm. So we would go through there and since I've been here since you know, 1985, it's never really been an issue. Mm -hmm. uh, in 2016, residents uh, were upset about it and at that time we stopped. And when we were doing that cut in there this time, we had the idea that let's bring some topsoil in and lay it down in a portion of that area that is all concrete rubble mm -hmm. so that in the future we won't have to bring this foam mower in. We'll just bring a regular lawn mower in maintain that area's turf, mm -hmm. and we had no intention of going to the water line. You know, as all these talks have happened and chances of removal of Phragmite and, you know, knotweed and whatnot, then we talked about the installation of a swale, we talked mm -hmm. about mm -hmm. a shoreline planting, mm -hmm. uh, we talked about uh, a tree planting, mm -hmm. such as a willow tree. Yeah, I remember, we've been talking about um, it for a while. Because, as, while we've heard a little bit tonight changes the plan from what I know and is good, Another concern that we will have is that um, two-thirds of Lake Agawam shoreline is privately held, so the, the public doesn't see that. The remaining third, you know, which is the area that we're talking about, mm -hmm. uh, the town and the Southampton Boardwalk and uh, Pond Lane, uh, we want to leave those all as open vistas as possible. Mm -hmm. um, unless something has changed, the last time I saw this plan, a lot of this stuff was going to be so tall that that view would be lost to the yes. other 3,000 public residence. Yes, I remember that. And that's an issue, I think, that I have. Right. Um, now, also, just uh, on the plan that we had initially, uh, I, Chick Voorhees might have been saying something else, but we were talking about cutting and wicking as well in the beginning. Mm -hmm. And the, uh, the budget costs that we're also talking about here, they're probably actual costs, but what the DPW was going to do was use existing material and in in-house labor. So uh, if you want to go off those numbers just for finance, I understand that. But the actual village share was going to be much less than that. Mm -hmm. okay. And it does mention here on um, the original, well, I guess this is for the 142. So you intend to pull out uh, a lot of the debris that's in there? Sorry. I mean, that's, um, a, that's a huge undertaking. Well, what we, what we, what we, you know, we, we, we had a meeting, and we, we, I spoke Met Gary out there, and I met with Chick Voorhees as well to try and figure out what's the most effective thing we can do as well as we can do it. Um, rather than coming in and excavating out <clears throat> more debris than we need to and causing more disturbance, which actually invites more invasives into it, um, the plan is, is as we're digging to plant these things, we're going to hit some debris, and any debris that is in our way will be removed. Mm -hmm. We're not going to start doing wholesale debris removal, because then we get into a totally different operation. Okay. Um, so we want to be able to remove what's necessary, but not do more damage than needs to be done in getting the native plantings installed. Okay. And then the, the other question I have is in lieu of um, uh, what uh, Trustee Skrimsky indicated, is there a way to create not the entire section as a low vista, 
but so that people can see the lake as, as they go around that area. In other words, do an area that are plantings that are low, and I think Gary, you and I talked about that, that right. you know, maybe three areas, four areas as you ride by there. Well, I'm, 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 I'm always thrilled when our plantings actually grow up to the point where they become a problem. <laughs> usually, usually between the deer and the salt wind and everything else, we have just the opposite problem. But I think, um, you know, tweaks to the actual planting plan um, can obviously be accommodated. Yeah. But I also think, um, as, as somebody who has been a representative for a great number of people on Lake, Ag Lake Agwam, um, I know the Zoning Board of Appeals is always pushing to be um, to go along with the tent with the Lake uh, Agam Comprehensive Plan. Mm -hmm. I think here is a great example for the village states. Do what I do, as mm -hmm. an example, because one of the things we're always commented on when we do buffer plantings is it's not thick enough. There's not enough vegetation. It's going to be mowed and everything else. This is a great buffer planting plan that's going to stay in perpetuity. It's going to stay for a long time. It's going to increase the health of the lake. Um, I mean, frankly, where we stop here, you still have areas here and you have a whole edge that's all public vista. Mm -hmm. You have that view. This plot property, this area, what, are you saying because there's a hedgerow here that we're supposed to provide a view? I mean, the, for the for the, I've been out here now for 25, 30 years, and when that, that, when that Phragmites has been there, it's been there as long as I've been here. Unless it's been like now, the end of the winter, where it's been knocked down, you don't have a view anyway. I think also, talking to the ecological health of the pond, um, any buffer planting that we are required to do by this village or the town of Southampton or anywhere else invariably requires a certain percentage of woody plants. They really, we are prohibited in many cases from just doing herbaceous plantings for, for a couple of different reasons. One, um, herbaceous plantings really don't do much for filtration in the winter months when, they're, when they've died off. And it's the, 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 the stems of the winterberry and the viburnum and the native shrubs that, that would have been there had they not been cleared mm -hmm. um, way back when at some point. So the idea of putting in a, a native planting that really is appropriate and what one would find in nature, which is kind of the combination of what we have with the native shad and the winterberry and the viburnum, augmented then with some of the native wildflowers and grasses, that really creates the most effective habitat and the most appropriate kind of ecosystem ecological buffer to the edge of the pond from an ecosystem standpoint. From, and aesthetically, there's a lot to it also with flowers and berries and, and, and wildlife uh, habitat and things like that. Um, height and looking through. I've never, I, I wish I could say that I've ever planted a buffer that was so thick no one could see through it. I'm not sure I've ever been that successful yet. Um, and I don't know that, that any buffer we plant would really block views. It's not like the privet hedge across the street. Right. Because of the diversity of the plantings and the way they tend to be planted in clumps and gaps and things like that, it's not going to be like a privet hedge along there. There are going to be higher points, there are going to be lower points, there are going to be thinner points, there are going to be thicker points, just as one would expect to find in nature. Right. I mean, I don't want to date myself, yep. but i got to tell you those Phragmites are younger than I am because that used well, to be... you're better looking. Well, I don't know. <laughs> the, that used to be completely open. I remember you know, when it was open. Down that area, right. and it was a great vista. Yep. Yeah. You know? that's where but now that's not with the Lake, with the, um, with the lake um, Aguam sure. Comprehensive Plan. It's supposed to, we're, we're supposed right, to I, I realize the buffers and actually, stuff. And actually, the, the plants that we have chosen, that actually Mr. Hollander has chosen, they were deliberately chosen so they bloom at different times of the year, too. Mm -hmm. So I think it's going to be very attractive. We've also left about a 10, 10 foot swath so we can still have, because that's the one thing with the swale, you removed it, you're still going to have an area for people to bike and walk along the edge on the grass. So there's mm -hmm. going to be a mowed, you know, an area where the village can still mow that area, that people can walk along the road and enjoy the pond, enjoy the new buffer, enjoy the lake. Right. Mm -hmm. um, but at the end of the lake, you, you have the parking area, which mm -hmm. uh, is actually a town-owned piece, and we, we have a representative back there from the town, <laughs> from the trustees. Yeah. <laughs> and um, that does provide a vista of the, of the lake. Uh, I think that this board would be more acceptive of the project. And I think it's a great project. I'm not... You know, I think it's it's a great concept if uh, the residents could get a, a a view of the lake there. Well, we uh, we have. Oh, well, I was going to say we have the view from the lake. Their original plan he showed had the whole buffer thing and with trees put along. So that it, you know it. it 
I'm looking for a comment. Could I explain yeah, the original testing, please? Yeah. 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 Just one sec, sir. Yeah. Um, I just want to say, right now we have swans sitting on the nest. Okay? That's true. So, so those hatchlings aren't going to be until June. So we have no rush right now to do anything on this piece. That's what uh, Gobler said, and the person who stood in front of the apparatus right. two years ago said, we cannot move that stuff because of the swans. And, and right. So, so, I'm, so I'm that's going to be June. I, that I would now say get rid of it. I would basically see if uh, these people could possibly come back with another plan that would allow the screening of the lake for the residents, but on, on the other side, allow for the vista for the people who walk and run around that lake every day. Well, well, I don't know if they need another plan. It's just that maybe some moving around of the, what you got. Yeah. Um, and also keep in yeah, point, yeah, too, this is village property, right? Right. So I'm not proving anything without further dialogue about this because that's our job that mm -hmm. every there all the other parts are about private residences that's the one last part so as great as it is it's, it's going to be funded privately funded that's beautiful it's very magnanimous however we did have a plan in place and and a, and a, and a, fun, and a way to fund it uh, without killing the village i'd like to see a combination of the two because that's our responsibility of overlooking that village property without privatizing it, in my opinion. Um, but go ahead. It's Can actually not it? privatizing it. Well, I mean, it's, you're Because if you you're actually look, if you look, if you actually, I don't years. know, um, the trustee, if you actually took a look at these heights and looked at where they are, I think you'd have more of an understanding and actually looked at how we have some trees here and then it goes down to shrubs. Trees. You also have to realize that it's planted where the shoreline starts going down. So where you're walking is still the height of Gin Lane and then as the shoreline goes down is where the planting is. So I think you have in your head or it's been fed into your head that you think you're going to have this wall and you're not going to have it. <laughs> well, yes. I mean, I don't know. I can't conceptualize I mean, you have to, and then you also... Somebody has said that to me that was a fear there. Is it looking like that? So yeah, somebody has fed it into okay. my head. Well, then, I would ask That's that you take a closer too. look at this. And also the fact that this isn't the only part. You have the, you have the park at Lake Avalon that has a beautiful view. You have the area around Pond Lane that has a view. It's not like, I, I feel like I'm getting the feeling that you feel like we're closing off the only village-owned view of Lake Avalon. One of them, not only. Oh, what we're trying to do is actually improve the environmental health of Lake Avalon. Mm -hmm. And it's okay. a nice spot to do it. Let, let me um, address... Uh, your concerns, Mr. Yos, uh, Trustee Yos, 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 Yos. Um So I'm Scott Lindsay. I, uh, Scott Lindsay, I live uh, at 422 First Neck Lane. Uh, it's actually that White House up there in the picture back there. Um, I was the person that was standing in front of the uh, <laughs> I know, I know, machine. Yes. I, was, I, was, um, I wasn't saying names, but yes. I was, uh, <laughs> and I, I did it out of uh, civic responsibility because the village was undertaking work without a permit, which my our environmental lawyer, uh, who also happened to be the uh, um, executive director of Peconic Baykeepers, advised us the village needed. Um, work stopped and a plan was submitted uh, by the village that you saw before, which was called for grass and trees and irrigation out of the lake. And a um, removal of the Phragmites with uh, uh, with, with spring. So we, my neighbors and I have, um, and along with Ed and Melissa here, have developed a plan that I won't repeat everything they've said that we think is uh, quite good. And we're, and we're, and as I also, as they mentioned, we're willing to pick up the delta in the cost, which is a significant amount of money that the village would never pay out of its own pockets. To, to, to regard that as privatization, I think it's kind of a public-private um, partnership on village land. The, the um, prior proposal, which calls for grass, would not have prevented runoff or have a, um, uh, a root system that would even be close to what is provided currently by the um, Phragmite. My original position, our original position, was to leave the Phragmite in place and plant adjacent to them. The logic of that was, it by definition has to be better, because you're not taking the Phragmite out. And we were persuaded that that, might, that made sense, because the Phragmite right now can't go farther up 
the land because they've gotten to where they've gotten. They can't go to the south because of the, the beach, the beach club and the parking lot. They can't go any farther to the north because that's where the sterns live. And they've gone as far into the water as, they, as, as possible. So our view was avoid the ecological uh, can of worms by taking it out and just plant adjacent to it. And also, by the way, maintain the habitat for the one pair of swans that happens to live in that lake, because that's, each lake gets one pair, that's a, each body of water. Um, in talking to Chick Voorhees, uh, we are persuaded that <coughs> if we're going to do this, let's remove the Phragmites and the knotweed, and that will help whatever we've got, whatever we're installing grow. It wasn't my original or our original view, but we're persuaded, but it's not an unreasonable position to take. And we agreed with Chick. Said, you don't want to do it that way? That's fine. And we'll pay for it. And we'll maintain it to make sure that it stays that way. So um, opening up um, or replacing this thing with, with um, open spaces is not something that's currently there. No one is losing anything by, the, by this proposal. There, no one in the village is losing anything. No motorist driving around the corner is losing anything because it's not there today and we're willing to pay for it. So um, I, I won't repeat everything these, these guys have said, but um, uh, we, we have come to you for not for approval, as Melissa said. All we've come to do to, you, uh, to come here today is to walk you through the proposal and ask that you allow the ZBA to rule on this. So, thank you for your time. Thank you. May I ask one question? <clears throat> no, 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 go. Uh, being new to the world of Phragmitis, but hearing a lot about Phragmitis in all the board meetings that I've attended, who um, thought we'd ever argue about Fred Fred Midas. Midas. <laughs> <laughs> And maybe our town trustee has some knowledge on this. Um, so there's been a little, little bit of back and forth as to whether it's good or bad. It sounds like people are leaning towards it being bad. And then the eliminate. We would go either way. The oh. village, or, sorry, the neighbors, you leave the Frag Mighty, you take it out. Whatever you guys want to do, we'll do. Well, it's not only guys. My frustration it really is, is that how I can have two or three specialists in a room and they all have different opinions. It's just frustrating to me. Well, we, because we've actually done very got, successful yeah, wetlands yeah. restoration in the village. Was, we that have. was my question. And, and it's usually three <laughs> years of the cutting and either spraying or wicking. Yeah. And um, I can take you to a couple that we've done where the natives who were there that we didn't even know, I mean, we didn't even have to, we did a passive restoration, it came back on its own. But it takes a lot longer. By doing this, it, it didn't, you know, uh, the one actually, uh, Muller, I was thinking about. We had the viburnum and everything else, the woodies, and that made a big difference. We had junkets that came up, and we planted, and, but the, doing the three years of maintenance, it's still a Junkus is a good thing, by the way. Junkus is a good thing. It's a plant. <laughs> Not a bad thing. Right. Not a bad thing. So no. it is successful. I guess the question is the Phragmites that you're addressing at Lake Agawam. Mm -hmm. I heard herbicide or something needs it, to be sprayed and it goes no, to no, the roof. No, no, this is not, they're, 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 they're not using the spray. They're not using the glove. The Phragmites, we're gonna, the, the Phragmites, you can actually reduce its vigor by cutting it. It's got a big, dense mat of rhizomatous roots. And so you can, by cutting it, we we'll go back to high school botany with photosynthesis and the nutrients going down. By cutting the leaves off it, you reduce the amount of nutri nutrients going down to the roots and slowly but surely, it starts to die off. The Japanese knotweed plant of a different order, that when you cut it, it laughs at you and grows more vigorously. Yeah, uh, so that you actually do have to try and apply an herbicide. Now, the problem is applying an herbicide immediately adjacent to the body of water. And the herbicide that, that, that Mr. Voorhees had suggested um, is a glycophosphate, it's Roundup, it's something that's, that, that gets used a lot. It does have detrimental impacts in marine habitat. So by, it's, it's more expensive and more time consuming, you can imagine, to take each plant and to do that, but it does help to cut down the ecological impacts of doing it. And it's, 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 it's nothing is, is perfect and absolute, but what we're trying to do is find the best alternatives in the most reasonable way to create a healthier buffer for the edge that's gonna preserve 
the beauty of what Lake Agawam is, mm -hmm. and that's really the point of doing the buffer. I think, Are you and Chick on the same page? Yeah, Ch yeah. Chick, and I, Chick and I sat and talked right. through this thing. We made some changes on this per Chick's desires. I think one of the things that I, uh, that I felt in having discussion with Gary and being over there and taking a look at it mm -hmm. is it, it's not, this is not just a visual impairment or whatever we might say for having the Phragmite there. The Phragmite really, really has an effect on the lake. I mean, as it falls over and decomposes in the lake, it increases the nitrogen of the lake. Mm -hmm. So we really do want to get rid of it. Right, it's a bad thing. Yeah, so my feeling would be we need a plan to get rid of it. And I'm seeing that you now have a plan to get rid of it. And just to be clear on this, the, the wicking procedure is more expensive than the spraying. Oh, the absolutely. original plan was spraying. Um, that whole, that, no. those numbers are not in the original plan, okay? So actually, that, that number should be higher, but we'll leave it where it is. Um, the, 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 the cutting and wicking procedure that we're gonna have to do for three years uh, is more expensive. We're picking up 100% of it, okay? And if it's not dead in three years, we'll do it again. I mean, I just want to say, as far as getting rid of the Phragmites, I think we're in complete agreement over that. A three-year plan of cutting, wicking, which uh, in the beginning I did talk about wicking, not spraying with, with Chick. Just, just at the very end here is that the village is going to contribute, especially that we just take another look at these plantings and see if there are pockets there where we can put a very low vegetation, something that won't grow higher than three feet. You know, that you can still have a shoreline planting. Let's just take their plan, let's just go back, let's just look at it again and see if we can come up with some little compromise knowing that mm -hmm. we're all in agreement on the removal part. So. Which is what I, I mean, that's what I'd like to hear from our, you know, Chick is, I understand yeah. you guys are discussed, but he's our. Yeah, unfortunately, Chick has yes, private yeah. matters and he can't be here tonight. So I, but I would like to him, I would really like him to opine on this to well, us. He I, I, I was about to say I can tell you what Chick said to me, but that's probably not what you want to hear. <laughs> but well, Chick, Chick, I like your trust, you. Yeah, Chick, Chick would want more, not less. Yeah. That's in you know having having been in front of Chick and Marty Shea and and every other you know person at the various municipalities out here. They would, in, in a perfect world, Chick would tell us to take out all the grass. Correct. He wouldn't want any grass anywhere near Lake Agawam. He'd want this buffer, basically he'd want all the grass removed in this buffer planting 50 feet wide. That's what we're required to do in other parts of the village. Mm -hmm. When we have, when we're anywhere near a wetland, we're required to install a 50 foot wide buffer. Mm -hmm. So this is a 10 or 12 foot wide buffer. And it's, you know, the best, it's a compromise between allowing pedestrians and bike riders that run up and down Gin Lane to have a, a 10 or 12 foot wide piece of grass next to there and get some buffer of some width that's going to actually be effective along the edge of the pond. But at this, but, but I won't, but that's having, having had Chick criticize my buffer plans before for not being thick enough and big enough, that's generally what <laughs> or, he's been saying. Or are you using only plugs? I mean, that's what I was saying, no, the plugs and, and, oh, you're going to mow that. I mean, I mean yeah. seriously, yeah. <laughs> I must say, it's sure. a very generous offer to the village. Oh, it's a huge, no denying you know. Well, and one of the reasons why we also want to have Summerhill or somebody to install it, nothing against your crew, but to have it properly installed, that's why we have the soil amendments built in and everything, so it has the best chance of establishing and doing well. I have no interest in installing it. I know. That's <laughs> but after that time frame is done, push. then we, our, our DPW will have to. Well, he'll, all, all he'll have to do is mow, mow the grass. grass yeah. That's it. This, so this it'll be three year maintenance. We'll mow right. the grass if you want. <laughs> <laughs> Can we, can we go up a revision eight? I see you have seven revisions on that plan already. It's called compromise. <laughs> yeah, but a lot but of some of those were per check. They were per check. I mean, check, check, check and I have met out there looking at the first plan and then the subsequent plans, and we didn't want to present something to the board that didn't have check stamp of approval just because he's the, he's the environmental analyst that you guys are going to rely on for his opinion. And we work with Chick all the time, and so he and I kind of sat down. We originally didn't have the Phragmites and 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 the Polygonum control in this, and he asked for that for this three-year period. In and so we kind of discussed what we thought the best way to do this was. And in effect, what's on this plan is 
Our thoughts, chick's thoughts, our thoughts, chick's thoughts, presenting to you. In full disclosure, I think as you know, we, we thought when we met last month that we were going right to ZB. <laughs> that it was what really with Chick, you know, with working with Chick and what he wanted. And I, I have to just confirm what Ed had. Usually we're told, put more shrubs, put more trees. Mm -hmm. Never enough. Just, I'll, I'll go to the back. I just want to say it's public land. There's 30, 3,100 residents in Southampton. So I think we have to think of everybody. Granted, they're paying for a lot of them. I'm paying you. You're an employee, and you're representing the village. So I don't, just don't want you to just go to the back. No. You and Chick, <laughs> they're proposing something as, as wonderful as it is, yeah. but you're, you're, the, you're the line of defense. So um, I value your opinion and Chick's, and unfortunately Chick's not here. So I'm not saying I don't like that. I no. want to hear Chick say he's happy with this. Before I, I, I think we can take their there. plan, and we can make it a compromise. And I make it a little bit better for everybody. Because it is one hell of a generous, so I'm not belittling that at all. That's very generous of what you all do and to cover that financially, but. Um, yeah, th this has been through several, um, through several revisions. Um, it, it addresses the concerns. The height, which is, varies, the density, which is as wide as we can make it, just because of the, the thinness of the, the um, the strip um, pretty much has to be the way it's proposed in order to be at least as good as the Phragmites were in terms of filtration and water protection, which is which is the key standard here. And the Phragmites are actually quite wide, so I don't I, I don't think it's actually practical to start tr um, fiddling with this plan and making it smaller or or, or, or lower or whatever, which it currently is not. And this is the one we'll pay for. I understand okay. the fiddling part, but this is new to me. This may not be new to you guys, but this is new to me. I don't know. I can't speak to anybody else. Can, actually, so, just uh, to bring up something I was just thinking is that normally you're the recommended buffer, uh, buffer width for Lake Agam is 50 feet. I can tell you, I don't think there's one person in Lake Agam after some of the projects I've had recently that have gotten a lot of press has a 50 foot buffer. We're doing the best we can here. With the right now, it's an average of about 10 to 15 foot width. So picture it's going to be here going down a slope, and it's going to be shrubs. So even if you're in the car, and, I, and I, the reason I'm, maybe I'm pushing on this is that we've yeah, lost. We're, we're, lo we're going to lose a season. Yet. We're going to lose another season One if meeting. we do. Sorry? One meeting, the 24th, we can't listen. Because we, we can't, we can't go to ZB, Zoning sure. Board of Appeals. Zoning Board of Appeals has to go. Right. Then they need another month to write the decision. So now we're already into, if we come here, we can get in May, we can get mobilized and install at the end of May, beginning of June. We lose another month here to July, and really it's not a good time to do a planting in the middle of July. You know, that's part of the problem is the date on the plan, plantings is difficult to... Uh, to do well, whatever. I just became aware of this. Uh, that, uh, look, I'm one of what five, so got to do with um, uh, I would like to, I would like to hear my, my DPW person right and right. a check before I say go ahead. When is the next EPA meeting? 26. Yes. We're scared. The, um, the, uh, the board was nice enough to, to allow us to at least proceed with. Um, having it re-noticed, reopened. Mm -hmm. um, they are doing the posting and mailing. Diane told me from the billing department, so it's going to be on the 26th. Yep. And where is Chick? Is Chick away? Chick had uh, a family, a family issue, issue and oh. couldn't be here tonight. No, but that doesn't mean you can't talk to him, Rich. Yep. Mm -hmm. You can talk to him between now and then. Yep. And feel comfortable about it. Yeah. I mean, we don't have to wait for another meeting to bring Chick to discuss this in front of everyone. I mean, we're seeing everything that's here. Mm -hmm. um, I think what you really want to hear is um, verification of what they're saying here, and you want to feel comfortable with it. Oh, yeah. Okay. So. Yeah. But they want a decision from us tonight so they can proceed to ZBA. They want, no, they, which, they, at which they, time it's going to be reviewed by Chick, and we're not, this, you know, Chick may have, I don't know, but we just want to be allowed to continue with Chick. Yep. And we'd like to actually, if, 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 um, if you would like to work with, talk to Chick, and I, we would love to have it that Chick and the board and everybody's happy that at the ZBA hearing they can close it, have a decision for the next meeting, and we can start on this. Mm -hmm. Well, again, they may go ahead and do it regardless. So, uh, I mean, whatever. I'm not for, I, I would like to wait, but again, I'm only one of five. That's my opinion. 
Well, we, we aren't, I don't think we're in a position to give you um, uh, a yes or a no right now because the, the intent was that we were going to take all this information, bring it back into executive session and decide, but don't change. I mean, I want you to continue with the ZBA on the 26th and, and um, that, that shouldn't have an effect. Okay, so we'll proceed with, okay, we'll wait to hear back from the board. Yep. Okay, and great. One, one last uh, comment on the cost or the money issue here. So just to be clear, the, the, the original plan number does not include the cost of frag mighty removal, right. which was part of the original plan. So actually, it's probably low by 24 grand. Okay. Um, the new plan um, also doesn't include their cost. Okay, it doesn't include, so you, you have to add that. You have to add the cost of tunneling under gin lane for irrigation mm -hmm. and putting in a drip line. Um, and you have to um, um, factor in the, um, the ongoing maintenance, which under the original plan would have been your responsibility every year. So the, the real delta here isn't $70,000. The real delta is well over 100, which we will are giving the village to implement a plan that looks a whole lot better than what's currently there. And if you want to talk about Vista, turn around and look at the picture. You've got that entire stretch from the left to the right, which is open right now, with benches on it that you can sit on and look out. You also can go up to the monument at the other end and have that entire Vista um, to the south. And again, there is no vista there now, and there hasn't been one for at least 20 years. And there's no Fragmites in that bit. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah. Bring in the slide. Uh, <laughs> there are a few down on the south side. But anyway, so we're trying to be uh, generous. We're trying to create something that's really beautiful. Uh, it, by nature, has to be dense and thick because it's got to provide pr protection from runoff and filtration. That's what these okay. guys tell me. Anyway, so I've said enough. Thank you. No, we, we certainly appreciate all your efforts, and, and uh, believe me, we'll, we're going to take it in serious consideration. Okay. What do you need from us to expedite it? Just we just need to be allowed to go continue to the Zoning Board of Appeals. No. Can Can you just, just, which you're, you're scheduled for. We're scheduled for. Yeah. I don't want to walk in. Stop, stop. <laughs> thank you very much. No, thank, thank you. you. And thank you for all your efforts in creating a buffer. That's well, thank you for entertaining the questions. By today's standards, that's really key. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Good night. Okay. Comments from trustees. Trustee Skremsky. I think I've said enough. <laughs> <laughs> you good. Trustee Allen. 30 seconds. I don't know if you can get this, Charlie. You want me to put it on the Mrs. table? Johnson oh. Mrs. Johnson mentioned this earlier, and I want to commend Judy Johnson. She's the Energizer Bunny on steroids for helping put this together. We have a great lineup. But uh, the reason why we are putting this together is a lot of seniors didn't realize they had resources, one of which is a vet credit. We discovered a vet who, for 25 years, lives in the village and didn't realize that he could get a tax credit. Yeah. So anyway, we hope everybody comes May 1st, starts at 1 o'clock, should be done by 4. If anybody wants flyers, we have them. Thank you. Great, thank you. Uh, Trustee McGann? Um, I don't really have anything to add. We covered a lot of territory today. Yeah, we did. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Trustee Hatcher. Just, uh, one thing, it sounded like uh, Bonnie's suggestion about excluding the Hillcrest Miller Place area from that um, area affected by the uh, proposed 
plan that we have, and it, were you going to go up as a group or something? Could we do it soon? And, and yes. we're probably disposed to honor her request. And uh, but so I just want to know: Am I going to get a phone call, or, or what do we do? Are we just supposed to go look at it individually? Well, I wish <coughs> Travis were here, but we know we know the streets and the lots right. in question. We can all go up there, and we also know that Bonnie is going to support us with the community meeting that she is looking to schedule. Yeah. Am okay. I missing anything, Bonnie? Yeah, I'm, I'm going to come up for a conversation. Oh. I'm going to come up for a conversation. Okay. I can't hear you, Bonnie. She's going to come up for the conversation. I can't hear you. You, you got to go to the microphone. She's going to come up in comment section. She's, She's going to come up in second. Oh, yeah, don't worry. Just, uh, she didn't say anything. <laughs> So we should go up individually and be ready to fire no, by no, our next meeting? No, she's going to come up and discuss at no. the end. Oh, Because okay. have, we, we have second public comment. Yep. Yeah, she's going to Look, you know, Bonnie, you should come up now because, well, no, let, let, we'll finish the trustees. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, that was it? Yeah. yeah. Well, I, I got a bunch of stuff because, you know, as usual, Southampton is... Um, Pretty special place, and a lot of stuff is going on. Um, the real big thing, and I, I think um, Bonnie again has, has asked about it, is uh, the U.S. Open and, and jobs availability. Uh, I'll say that the, the county jumped on that and uh, pretty much took it over, but um, they they do have a, a jobs opening. Uh, session coming up, mm -hmm. and it is. Can we zero in on that? It's upside down. Mm. So will I. Job fair. There you go. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, Thursday. Oh, good. Mm. Okay, Charlie. There you go. Don't move. Is it ready? Just oh, perfect. Stop. Good enough. I can see it. Perfect. So the dates on it are Thursday, April 26, mm -hmm. and it's going to be held at the, it's an, unfortunately, it's, it's over on the Veterans it Highway. It's one-stop employment center. It's in Hopog. Yeah, in Hopog. At the one-stop employment center. Um, but that they, they have a number of different job availabilities from security guards to station attendants, bartenders, beverage managers, dishwashers, event ambassadors, kitchen assistants, shuttle attendants, operation helpers, parking attendants, production assistants, servers, sous chefs, tent chefs, and tent supervisors. Uh, the, what I thought was pretty impressive is that they, they're starting most of the wages at $15 an hour, which is uh, pretty good by today's standards and um, is, is, I think, pretty impressive. They said they have 10 job openings, uh, so it's, it's well worth anybody who is, is looking for a little extra work during that period to uh, uh, reach out to them. Mm -hmm. And um, if they need additional information on uh, getting up there or, or what is available, you know, certainly uh, give the village a call here and, and we'll try to direct you to the, the correct people. But as now, uh, Steve Ballone has sort of jumped on it and uh, he's hitting the whole thing off, I believe, with the town. And um, so it's up at Hop Up. <coughs> if you're looking for something, great to get up there and take advantage of it. Uh, then there's a, a lot of stuff that's going on in the village. We have uh, Southampton Art Center has Earth Day 2018 coming up on April 20th and 22nd. Uh, they got a bunch of stuff uh, scheduled for it, and it's including a, a, a talk on global warming and activism, and there's also uh, uh, some other things. There's a film, I believe, they're showing on, on global warming. Uh, I will tell you that from what I've seen, that on Earth Day 2018 is supposed to be a plastic day. 
so plastics are going to be a big issue, which uh, are, are huge, in, in, especially for us being on the ocean, uh, on the beach here. Any given day, you can walk down the beach and you can pick up a, a bag full of miscellaneous pieces of plastic. I mean, they're floating everywhere. So it's for Earth Day, the plastic day is, is a real big, big deal. Um, and there's a, a bunch of other stuff going on. You, you gave me too many sheets here. You can't even find them all. We have stuff at... Uh, upcoming events. Here we go. Southampton Cultural Center uh, is having an exhibition in the Seventh Circle. It's hosted by East End Arts Council. The exhibit features the work of three social and environmental ar artists, and the exhibition runs through April 30th. Great to t get a chance to take a look at that. Uh, Southampton Arts Center, the film Bombshell, uh, with Eddie Lamar. Now, you seem to know what that no, film was I'm about. I, it's the Eddie Lamar story. <laughs> Hedy Lamar. I, I got me. It's beyond me. Hedley. Actress. Hedley. Actress. And that's shown on Friday night at 6 p.m. And also the East End Arts uh, collected four curated by Pat Miller. Um, great show to go to. Uh, I mean, that's. I don't know how he does it. Every year he brings in uh, local artists, and every year they're different artists. Yeah. And, and, and you know, it just shows you what you have surrounding you in a community, and often you don't realize it. Uh, it's featuring over 30 local artists. Pretty What's impressive. The that the, that it's opened. Open. And it oh. runs through yep. May 29th. Yeah. I believe it is. May, the end of May? Yeah. And we also discussed the uh, Earth Days at SAC, which includes film, panel discussions, and, you know, as great as your special activities for kids. That's really, they're such an important part of educating them on, on Earth Day. And then the Southampton Historical Museum, in conjunction with Rogers Memorial Library, will have a discussion on women Air Force service pilots of World War II. Yay! <laughs> uh, with Julia Blum on April 19th. That should be interesting. Mm -hmm. um, so I would stress to everybody, be sure to check all the websites. Uh, there's some great organizations out here. Get a listing of their calendar and events and uh, take advantage of, of what you have available to you. you know, it's, it's quite a village. And with that said, second public comment. Bonnie? <laughs> We should have just gotten you a chair. I know. <laughs> What's your address? <laughs> Bonnie Cannon, 54 Miller Road, Southampton. Um, first, I wanted to thank you all for um, getting, um, following through and getting more information on the U.S. Open and um, getting that information. Thank you, Trustee Kimberly Allen, for she actually sent me some flyers and things and I sent that out to the community as well. So. Um, thank you for that. Um, the only question that I would ask is, as it relates to U.S. Open is I know that the Department of Labor and the county is pretty much overseeing that. Um, my question to you is, though, if, if we can get the county and um, County Executive Steve Ballone to, um, and the Department of Labor to say that they would allow for a career fair to be in, Southampton somewhere, is that still an option? Yeah, absolutely. We'll okay. find a spot for it. Okay. All right. Okay. Because I know that I think some reach out has been done to the Department of Labor um, representatives, but um, I don't know if reach outs have been done to uh, Steve Ballone or maybe to his public relations person. Maybe they can allow that to happen um, so that we can at least have a career fair yep. here um, instead of the individual having to go up to Hop Hog for 
a golf outing that's yeah, happening that in Southampton. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so that was that. Um, the other thing is um, I don't know all of the ins and outs, so that's why I'm just going to mention this and ask that you look into it. Um, it came to me that there were um, two individuals of color that have um, applied for positions for police, the, the village police department, and it was um, conveyed to me that they were told that they were not eligible, eligible for the jobs because they lived outside of the village of, of Southampton. And I know that when I was a trustee that that was not the case. I know that people on the list get, in the village, get the preference, but um, if there's no one else on that list for the village, then you go outside of the, um, you go outside and look at the other areas. So I was just concerned. I know, you know, this is, what came to me, but it was a concern that I had is, um, and I wanted to bring it to you to see, because it just didn't sound right the way it was brought to me. Now, what the real story is, yeah. you know, I don't know, but I think it should be, it should be looked into. Well, I, I don't know what the story is. It was brought to my attention today, uh, the same thing, and unfortunately, Chief Cummins is, is uh, out, of, out on training and won't be back until next week, so. Next week we'll we'll find out what the answer is, but you know I had no I have no knowledge of it. So yeah, so if you can look into that, yep. um, there is a blind spot here at the end of Miller Road. Um, you know where that where the um, the store, okay. the uh, restaurant is. People, yeah, people. They they even though you have it blocked off with that white line and you have this sign there. People are still parking, and I don't know if it could be a uh, yellow, so that they know that they're not supposed to park there instead of just the white, because people park there. And so when you're coming down, and some of I know Kimberly had mentioned it too, so she knows when you're coming down, you cannot see, and you can't see to make that left-hand turn at all, because people are parking. They're parking right down in front of that that restaurant and right to the corner. No parking, but we can look at it. Yeah, because it's a it's a bad and, and there's gonna be an accident. There's a, that's an accident waiting to happen. Um, the water treatment is that basically what we had talked about as far as when you were talking about the cluster of water treatments, and um, because my concern was one of the things that we talked about that you all talked about is the uh, rentals and pro possible rentals in the um, village district downtown mm -hmm. district, and the only way that that would be able to happen is if you had some type of septic system or something. So is this water treatment going to right. possibly allow for? There's, the septic technology just changes overnight. And our study that we originally did is uh, now somewhat outdated. Okay. Um, and they have uh, smaller pod units that will take an individual cluster of a number of stores or a number of restaurants and uh, process this, this septic. So um, yes, to your answer, it, it would allow you to uh, to do the to increase to, in, to increase the. Yeah, the just the, currently, we have more feedback research-wise on the residential part of that. Mm -hmm. There's not a lot of feedback yet on the commercial version of that. But that, yes, to answer your question, that's what is that's what leads into allowing instead of a system wide, which Trustee Hatrick brought up earlier, instead of back in the day when you still on the board, and again when I first came on, I was going to meetings all over the place with Mayor Ripley at the time. The discussion was the sewer district at the time because that's all that was available to us, um, and that's all the county was allowing because they didn't have these this new technology. This all just came about within the past several years. So yeah, it, it's been widely used in residential. The next step is to get some work done and implement it to the commercial. But if, you're, if your question is, would that, if we were to implement that, would that allow us to create living spaces above? <coughs> yes, and the answer yes. is yes. Okay. And that's something that we like, and we would like if, to. If the health department, uh, again, yeah. yes, counselor, well, yeah, the health department allows it. So granted that that yeah, is part so of that, yes. And I don't see why they wouldn't allow it. Great. Pirates concert, is it possible to get with you offline to see when you said that the, the bid was scoped down, the scope of work was 
was changed so that it would be decreased to see exactly what that is. The house remains the same. It's just the landscaping outside that we feel we could do ourselves rather than putting out the bid. Okay, so great. That was what was done on the second second uh, scope. And then, have you looked at any type of career paths for individuals that are working part time to become full time? Like um, our our younger people that are working part time, <laughs> is are there any type of career paths that so this is a suggestion? that you possibly can look at so that there's a career path from part-time to full-time? Well, I think it, oh, we... It depends. I'm always look at, at career paths for the younger kids. Okay. You know, I mean, we hire a number of kids that are TCOs or a number of kids that are, are grasshoppers or right. work in the beach and stuff. Right. Yeah, there's a lot and, of work And there. there's always open positions for them to move ahead and gain. Yeah. And just the last, this, this, thank you. <laughs> thank you for um, basically, um, you know, acknowledging the uniqueness of uh, the community. And um, just so that, just because so, I know you, you were kind of answering, like, what are the next steps? What are we doing here? Everybody acknowledges it. Right. <laughs> Experts, you know, and, you know, one of the things that I would just caution you is that I don't want anything, the same amount of energy and the same amount of focus that was put into um, coming up with your zoning changes and things that were needed for the village, which I know you all started that pretty much last year. I would want the same type of focus and initiative done. I don't want to rush anything because it's so important to our village, but I want us to pretty much look at it and focus on it, get the community involvement. Yes, I did say that. You know, I will reach out to, you know, the individuals in our community. Um, I'm just one member in the community, but I will definitely reach out to them. We will get a location um, as far as for the community and homeowners to come to that particular meeting. And, you know, we'll see basically what they say because I'm just one up there. But again, the same focus that an initiative and what you all put in to coming up with the plans for your proposed changes for the GFA, I would hope that you would use that same amount of time for this particular uniqueness as well. And if that means that you have to hold off and set aside that particular community and move forward with the whatever else that you need to do with the GFA, then maybe, you know, that would be well worth the while. And thank you for the basketball court. I look forward to <laughs> seeing it and knowing where you are looking at. Well, you, Bonnie, on the basketball court, when we present it, you're going to have to give us a lot of support because it is going to get a lot of... Uh, oh, I think you'll get it. Yeah. yeah I think you'll get no, it. I think we will, too. Yeah, I think you'll get it. You'll be surprised. input we have, the better. Yeah, you will. Okay, yeah. thank you. Thanks. Thank you for your time and allowing me to go over my three minutes. <laughs> <laughs> okay. yeah. Any other comments from the public? Yes. My name is Gerald Martin, I'm third, re third generation resident of Southampton Village, and I was impressed with one of some of the things Did that... Can you address your address? 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 45 Fault C Avenue. I don't live on Hillcrest. Um, and I was, I'm impressed with what Bonnie was saying, and but one of the things I was thinking about when she was speaking on the... Uh, job fairs and, and things like that. I know that under the last mayor, I sat on the South Hampton, uh, the Village Affirmative Action, even though we didn't meet often, but uh, I did. I was active on that committee. Uh, and I sit on the South Hampton Town Affirmative Action. We just had a meeting uh, yesterday. And one of the things that I think about, the problems that we have in hiring uh, certain members of other communities into the jobs. And I'm thinking, is that same situation going on here in the village? Uh, how often is opportunities given to minority communities for employment, part-time employment? You just mentioned the beach. That was one of the things that we were talking about. We mentioned the um, a golf, the golf thing. That was something else that we mentioned. So these are concerns to me. Mm -hmm. um, so can you comment on that at all? And one last thing, you had mentioned there was a veteran that was 25 years. I think I fall into that category also. You need I definitely to come. need that information. And I'll <laughs> RSVP for you, Mr. Martin, and here's the flyer. There it is. <laughs> thank you. Thank you for saying that, and thank you for your service. Thank you so much. Thanks. 
Any other comments? With no further comments, uh, I motion to adjourn the executive session for the purpose of discussing personnel manners and, and legal matters. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Aye.